please pray with me. May these words that I speak be grounded in my soul, encouraged by the God Spirit in me. And may these words that you hear be captured by your soul, enlivened by the God Spirit in you. Amen. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is renewed day by day. Reading these words in Paul's letter to the Corinthians earlier this week, I was reminded of um, a moment last fall listening to CBC radio. Sheila Rogers was interviewing someone, an older man, and I'm not even sure now who he was or what the topic was. But at one point in the conversation, this man said that even though he was nearing 80 years of age, he still felt like a 20-year-old inside. And Sheila laughed and said, 20? I still feel like I'm 12. And so do I. And I suspect most of you feel younger than your actual age. Would I be right? Yeah. 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 It is this feeling for, that for me points us toward that indwelling spirit, always there, always young. It is this feeling that reminds us that our inner divine spirit is part of one great divine spirit. We are swimming in a big river. Yet it seems that as we age, many of us resist this natural process, seeing wrinkles and graying hair and sore joints as negative imperfections. It is hard not to see ourselves this way when our culture continually promotes things and ways to keep us young. But despite the culture's expectations, this inner renewing spirit should and could give us cause to live more fully into our aging process. In Japanese culture, this is called wabi-sabi, described this way by Roger Houston in 10 Poems to Change Your Life Again. <laughs> and he says, to praise the imperfect, the ordinary, is not something that comes easily to us in the Western world wedded as we are to the idea of the new, the young, the latest innovation. But in Japan, there is an entire worldview that appreciates the value of the imperfect, unfinished, and faulty. It's called wabi-sabi, where the first term refers to something simple and unpretentious, and the second points to the beauty that comes with age. It's an aesthetic that sees beauty in the modest and humble, the irregular and earthy. The Japanese take pleasure in mistakes and imperfections. For me, it's not just about our physical aging. When, when we ground our life in the renewing spirit within us, we become open to accept our imperfections of character as well. Not an acceptance that then affirms bad behaviors. I'm not talking about that. But an acceptance that forgives all our imperfections and allows that divine spirit to move us always toward greater and deeper love. Samuel Ullman writes, youth is not a time of life. It is a state of mind. It is not a matter of rosy cheeks, red lips, and supple knees. It is a matter of the will, a, f a quality of the imagination, a vigor of the emotions. It is the freshness of the deep springs of life. Youth means a temperamental predominance of courage over timidity of the appetite, for adventure 
over the love of ease. This often exists in a person of 70 more than a child of 17. Nobody grows old merely by a number of years. We grow old by deserting our ideals. Years may wrinkle the skin, but to give up enthusiasm wrinkles the soul. Mm -hmm. Whether 70 or 17, there is in every human being's heart the lure of wonder, the unfailing childlike attitude of what's next, and the joy of the game of living. This enthusiasm that he is talking about is for me the renewing spirit within. That spirit that Paul says renews day by day by day. This spirit, this part of me that is greater than me, part of one great love we call God, though eternally present, does not demand our attention. This day-to-day -day renewing spirit waits patiently, ever so patiently, for us to embrace it. On the night you were born, the night wind whispered, life will never be the same because there has never been anyone like you ever in the world. It's the opening lines to the story I read the children. We need to believe this. We need to believe this and make of our life the light we came here to be. It makes no difference whether we have 90 years or nine years ahead of us. What makes a difference is how deeply we allow our God Spirit to live in each moment of our lives. Barry Andrews in his book, uh, Emerson as Spiritual Guide writes, we always have all the time there is. We always have all the time there is. It's up to us to make the best use of it. It's also an illusion to think that the longer the duration of time, a year, a decade, a century, the better. But God works in moments, Emerson insists. We ask for a long life, but tis deep life or grand moments that signify. The measure of time should be qualitative, not quantitative. Moments of insight, of fine personal relation, a smile, a glance, what ample borrowers of eternity they are. Eternity culminates in the present moment. The measure of wisdom is the appreciation of the day. The learned scholar the learned scholar is not one who unearths ancient history, Emerson explains, but rather the one who can unfold the theory of this particular Wednesday. The minutes we are given are not stepping stones to future happiness. In fact, they constitute happiness and the only eternity that exists for us. I think Jan Phillips is right to say that when we open to the renewing spirit, it causes us to sing. Whether we can sing or not, by, <laughs> by society standards, as Jim shared with us this morning, it causes us to sing. She says, I will sing the song of you, that they see you as themselves, not light years away in the distant sky, but rooted rooted like an oak in the ground of their being. I have decided that rather than just occasionally realizing that the spirit of me is newer and younger than my age and years, I will rather allow that spirit to live more fully. And I would encourage each of you to do the same. Not to live recklessly or selfishly or foolishly, but to live more fully, live more fully in the moments we have been given. I found this amazing poem by Rose Malemwa 
Mokanchu Limbo. Mm -hmm. I can't believe I got that all out. <laughs> and I want to end by sharing a bit of that poem. And I, Rose is R-O-S, and I don't know if Rose is a man or woman, it really doesn't matter. Um, but Rose writes, when we were born, we knew only love. Like language, hate was foreign to us. All we craved were hugs and kisses, and ample time to turn giggles into laughter. We concentrated on today because we didn't know the person called tomorrow. And yesterday had already left with all its toys. We were engrossed in the things that brought joy. So don't be shocked when your body ages and your soul remains a curious little five-year-old. You were never meant to grow up. You were only destined for your soul to make room for more creativity and laughter. You are not an outcast or an outlier. You are the ocean. Your strength both terrifies and amazes a constant body of change that stays true to the things it holds dear. So let your spirit grow. Let your spirit stay young. For your spirit is as vast as the ocean. Mm -hmm. We are swimming in a very big river, my friends. The ocean of spirit that is part of each of us and is the heart of every way that life shows itself in this universe. With that in mind, may we forever see our lives as ageless wonder. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm.